You only graduated from Central St. Martins like a few years ago. Did you expect this level of success so quickly? That is a big question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it uh, still looks kind of a, a big journey. Yeah it, yeah, yeah, it doesn't feel like it was, it feels like it was quite a long time ago just because of everything that's happened. But yeah. um, no, I don't think we expected it at all. I mean, when we finished the MA, and because the MA is such an intense experience, I think our master plan was to pack your bags and come back to Portugal and yeah. have a farm or something because we were like <laughs> exhausted and drained. Tell me a bit more about what you just implied there with that kind of <laughs> moment where you left the MA. Have you found that you have had moments where you've questioned whether you want a career in fashion? I guess working that close with Louise Wilson, it was kind of some sort of psychotherapy. And <laughs> by the end of it, we're, you're just so drained and um, we don't have you didn't have time to, to think about yeah, what yeah, to go you, next. Yeah, you didn't have time to think, like, how's my career going to go? And this is where it gets tricky because you'll have different answers to these questions. But yeah. I'm interested in the point where kind of fashion first became something you were intrigued by. Did mm. it come when both of you were children? How did it work? Did start mean? with you, Carlo. I mean, for me, it was weird because it, um, it was quite instinctive and I'm from a background that has nothing to do with, fa with fashion whatsoever. and. Um, I'm from a small city in Portugal. Uh, my parents actually own a music shop. <laughs> so, and they kind of wanted to me to kind of work on the family business, but <laughs> that didn't happen. That didn't happen. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, because they, they had no clue whatsoever of how to talk about fashion or um, anything. They were still quite supportive, which I was quite impressed to be honest. And yeah, it did well. Think. <laughs> so what point did you think, I want to work in fashion, I love this? Was there like a magazine you read, was it, um, was it a shop you went to? I don't know, I think mainly it was, f I got it from t watching TV and um, I was quite obsessed with it and <clears throat> when I was quite young I knew that I wanted to do something creati creative and related with designing so I was quite confused for a while about being some sort of drawing teacher and then I realized that it wouldn't make that much sense but then I went to architecture and still it wasn't really fulfilling for me and yeah I think that's when I realized that if I want to do something I want to do what I really like and it was fashion design. Marta, it's a similar story for you, tell me about when kind of fashion first entered your consciousness. I've, n I've no idea like I can't like pinpoint the, mo the moment where it happened but I remember it's quite a cliche story, but my grandmother is a seamstress. Um, she's she had her own like seamstress, like machinist studio, and um, I remember being quite young and like hanging around with her and like loads of like bin bags with scraps of fabric and d doing my own little like dresses on a weird wooden stand that she had lying around. And then obviously I think what, it happened the same thing as it happened with Paolo, like when I started growing up and looking at career options. Especially in Portugal, there's not a lot of, you know, you don't think that fashion is a great career choice because there's not a lot you can do. It's quite a small country, there's not, you know, the market, the market's not huge. Uh, it's just what you say about Portugal, because do you think that that's kind of helped in some ways because it's given you guys this particular sense of a cultural background and, a, and an upbringing that differs from your peers? I think it gave us almost like, like a clean start. Like we didn't have, that's the thing, like there's just... Yeah. Fashion related, there's not a lot of baggage I, I, I we come remember, with from Portugal. I remember that the only, only access that I would get to um, it's fashion not like the end would of the be world, like, <laughs> but it's not the it end of the world, but remote. it's still it's quite selected. And <coughs> I think I would only see some sort of um, documentaries on a very alternative channel in Portugal, and then maybe on some supplements that would come with the newspaper. But then it would still just be like massive brands like Galliano, Dior, and mm. um, Givenchy. So it would still be quite generic and... Um, so yeah, I think it, it made us not come with any kind of preconceived notions yeah. of things, so which then I think, when, when we got which here, was really scary. Yeah, but, but then when we got, <laughs> when we got okay. here and we went the first time to the Centre St. Martin's um, library, we were just so amazed with the amount of stuff that we had to, to have a look at that I almost got really scared of wasting time on, <laughs> on with one book, book. <laughs> with, with the, the wrong book. So I, 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 I think it took me long to realize where should I start. Yeah, you talk a lot now about those style mags, and I'm interested uh, in that kind of things like ID and days and, and the face. And I know, you know, from being in your studio, they were pinned up on your wall. Did you discover those before you came to London? No, not yeah. at all. I mean, that's the thing. We would probably like 
heard about it on a documentary or something okay. about it, but we, we didn't have a, a close relation yeah. with anything of that. So um, I think when we got here, we were I think we we're genuinely excited about uh, excited about like learning from scratch mm -hmm. almost mm -hmm. uh, because I mean the knowledge that we had before it was very technical and very industrial. So almost like it's a product and a design of the product. So it's quite nice to find out the other side of it actually through, through yeah, the magazine. I think that's why we got so obsessed about all the vibe and the kind of the girl sure. behind yeah. the collection. We spent quite a lot of time thinking yeah. about the other side yeah. of it. So it was that when you were studying at Citex? I mean, Portugal has a lot of like textile industries, like manufacturing industry, which is great. And we do keep a close relationship with Portugal in that sense. Mm. So the, the degrees and the courses are very technical focused. So the, they're meant to like train people to go in, into the industry. I mean, I, I remember our first classes being sewing classes mm. and, you know, in the very first week of the course or something, um, learning how to stitch and sew and pattern cut and technical drawings and all of that. But do you think that that technical ability has kind of stood you out a little bit from your peers? I mean, I think it, it, it definitely useful, helped a it? lot in the fact that during the MI. because we already knew about it and we already knew how to make a pattern or to actually sew a dress or something like that, uh, we kind of already uh, put it aside. Okay, we already know that. So now we need to learn how to do, um, how to be creative and how to th focus on the vibe of a collection, so sure. because it you already knew that, so we didn't want to waste time doing that anymore. And why did you know that you had to come to London? Because you said this to me before, Paddy, so you can only do what you do in London, and you knew that London was a place you needed yeah. to be. I mean, when we were doing our BA, yeah. um, actually mainly Marta was quite aware of what was going on, and she was paying close attention to how Mary Schwab was doing I fashion. Think it was like the Christopher time where Co like Louise Gray was doing fashion East, Mary Schwab, Christopher Kane was kind of getting quite sure. big at that point. Yeah. Should it's be. where is everything happening. Do you remember when you first met each other? Uh, it was on the BA actually. First, first year of the yeah. BA, yeah, probably. So that like really awkward, weird introduction day. <laughs> <laughs> that feels a bit weird, yeah. And why did you start hanging out? Like what drew you to each other? We were quite obsessed with work, I, yeah, think, I think, out of everyone else <laughs> in the class. We were quite like, yeah, it's like workaholics, and I guess something, I don't know, it was, oh god, it's a tricky yeah. question. I don't do know, you know it's how weird. To Marta was there, I was there, yeah. so, <laughs> so <laughs> might as well. Our, our tables were <laughs> probably close to each other, yeah. I don't know, eventually. He lived across the road and I used to need a place to stay, because <laughs> classes started really early in the morning. What was the point you said, okay, let's do this together? You know, we've, we've spoken about it, we knew that maybe at some point it was going to happen, but we didn't feel confident enough to go in it without exploring our yeah. individual but that's what that's what I said about the MA is that it was a very psychotherapy moment yeah, and it was about designer. finding uh, what we can uh, relate as a designer and, and I guess it wouldn't maybe. make sense to do it together so yeah so I think that's why we started separately and when we knew but what then I we, yeah we knew okay there's gonna be a show there's gonna be a collection out hopefully fingers crossed and um, if that is gonna if we have to go in it, you know, if we have to dig deep and figure out, you know, if we spend this much time figuring out what we are individually as designers, then we might as well take advantage of this process to figure out what we are together. Do you think it's quite there. innate, that ability to work together? I mean, we have quite different skills. So like instinctively, I grab one thing, Pal grab the other, and we've kind of learned how to, what each one is going to get. And then obviously when it started growing and it becoming a company, uh, then we had to structure it somehow and kind of going like, okay, you're in, in charge of this. We let each other go off our own little searches now from yeah. time to time instead of like bumping heads for too long. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one thing that we learned. Do you find it quite hard? Do you look at sometimes the pace of it and think, how am I just going to keep going like this? Or do Wait. you just have to not think like that? What the industry is demanding out of designers, it, it becomes a bit unreal and, and it takes the soul out of things, which is something that worries us because yeah. we don't want to do it unless... We don't want to do a product and just stick a label on it and kind of... Yeah. That's it. This is um, perhaps a question I think you're probably very tired of, of uh, being asked, but let's talk about the denim. Yeah. Where, <laughs> which was the first one of you that like potted off to Berwick Street or wherever and came back with a big roll of denim? How did that happen? It, it has a lot to do with our design process. When we yeah. actually started, when we were about to finish the MA, we realised that 
the only decade that we felt some sort of relation was the 90s and yeah. mm -hmm. because we didn't leave the 50s we didn't leave the 40s so we decided it was the 90s and then we went on all this research on id purple uh, the face all those magazines yeah. we end up having a pile of like this of people this wearing t-shirts and jeans and jeans jackets mm. and yeah. things and the the thing is when you try and do it, i mean we've always fought with being too um, contrived maybe because of our Portuguese background which is very kind of precise and technical mm. that we wanted to get ourselves out of that contrived zone and the thing is when you work with um, any other fabric um, it doesn't have that same rawness and it doesn't have that same roughness. It's interesting because I feel with your work there's this endless sort of struggle and battle and I mean that in a good way because it comes out in a very interesting way between kind of like mood and garment do you feel like you make fashion or do you feel like you make clothes or do you feel like you make both and should they not be separated one of the parts of our process is actually we tend to do a lot of uh, vintage research and actually when you're trying to go to some sort of a, a certain vibe we try to find the garment that would actually translate that vibe so that we get the right fit the right type of pocket, the right type of thread on something that was done and then we can rework it but in a way that would still feel quite honest mm, yeah. instead of trying to do with something, um, design a jacket straight from a sketch, it will always look somehow quite fake and it wouldn't sit the way that we wanted to sit. Mm. Would, you, so. you, do you, would you say you look at it as clothes a little bit and I look at it more in the fashion sense and I think maybe that's what yeah. why it comes together in that sense because That's I'm interesting. Paolo goes, can go on and on about the proportion of yeah. a lapel or a pocket and I just, I just don't see it and I think and then I kind of I see the overall image of it but then I don't know how to break yeah. it down but then into if you a actually garment. go to a vintage shop you will probably be the one grabbing stuff and say yeah. okay, there's something it about this it has to be something like this and then yeah maybe that's why it comes out as a struggle because I, I guess we have a different answer for that yeah our generation, a younger generation, are just kind of re-grabbing pictures of Kate Moss and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. um, and in a way, I feel like you guys have kind of bottled that mood and, and built a brand yeah. on it. Why is everyone so nostalgic? It's it's quite weird when you start, when you know, when you're like deep into something and then you kind of look around and realise, you know, there's a few people going into the same kind of research and mood. But I don't know, I don't know why that happened. I guess, um, I don't see it as looking as not looking to the future. Um, I, sti I still think it's quite, you know, we, we force ourselves to be yeah. quite modern and new in a way. I, and I, I think mean, I, I think I don't remember seeing any of our, our pieces back in the 90s. I, I, yeah. Although I, I, I really, we really made a big effort to kind of extract the vibe. We didn't see that on the 90s. You know, it's denim and it's frayed denim and it's ripped and it is grungy in a way, but we've, we never want it to feel, yeah, kind of too referential or literal or... It was not just the imagery, it was the way that people were fa were looking and, and, and approaching fashion in that sense. And it was it was just as much about reading interviews with like Melanie Ward or Corinne Day mm. as it was about looking at the editorials that then came out of it. So it was not just the imagery, it was the whole kind of... Yeah, it was the whole thing that was happening at yeah. that point and how it was contradicting the whole like glamour kind of put together side of fashion. Yeah. I think what's interesting about kind of people like Melanie Ward's work and, and Venetia Scott's oh, work yeah. and the people that you mentioned <clears throat> is they come along at this really interesting time where they can kind of like disrupt and subvert. Do you feel that ever? Do you look at their work and think, oh, that was so revolutionary. We couldn't do something that revolutionary now. It does feel like it is less, what's happening now, it's, it's less likely for something like that to happen. Um, mm maybe because the industry is bigger, the commercial demands are bigger, you know, the, the financial pressures are bigger and um, I have no idea. I just think hopefully we're doing something that pushes thing in, things in some kind of direction <coughs> that mm. is slightly different from I what guess, came before. I <laughs> That's I guess, a very yeah. kind of vague I guess way to put line, it. But we're trying to enjoy what we're doing and yeah. hopefully if we're enjoying it, that will translate. Indian, yeah, and so. hopefully it will mean something as well, but it's going to be quite hard for us to understand what it means now being mm. in it. Is that intentional? I think, I think we both have the need creatively to kind of challenge ourselves and, and do something that, that feels like we're putting ourselves a bit in a bit of a risk. Mm. 
I guess, I guess, the, again, it was a sort of a, I think, a connection because um, we didn't intend to do something that was terribly precious in a way that it would be super expensive in a way that you would just keep it on your ward wardrobe uh, and you would only wear it one time. We wanted to be, we wanted to be accessible, so that's why we related to kind of a a different kind of point of view of designing a collection. And yeah, yeah. we related more to the alternative, I guess. So mm -hmm. we we just went with it. Do you ever think about the longevity of the label? Because it feels like it's made. It is made for a specific generation. It's made for yeah. a younger client, which you know is interesting, given that yeah. a lot of high fashion is made to be bought by a kind of older woman and you, you know, yeah. you've said before that you keep your price points a bit lower so kind of a younger shopper yeah. can buy them. But do you think about what will happen when that customer grows up? Do you think you'll always stick with the same kind of woman in the same 20 well, years? I mean, I, I see it kind of as a, a learning process still. Uh, I don't want to be stuck doing the same thing for the rest of the time. So um, yeah. I think we're going to meet new people, we're going to do different things and hopefully the product That's will change. That's going to ring a bell somehow. Yeah, and, yeah, I'm yeah. definitely trying and making an effort to actually evolve as a human being so <laughs> hopefully the collection will reflect <laughs> fingers <laughs> crossed do you ever feel out of your depth do you ever have moments where you're like oh my god oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. pretty much every day <laughs> definitely. <laughs> definitely that's an easy answer yeah so do you think that's fine part of why your stuff feels quite authentic is it because it is kind okay. of like there's an element of that just kind of like useful naivety yeah probably it. probably i mean i think Louisa, that when, when she did interview, and she used to say that quite often, that if you knew how things were done, you wouldn't do it. If you know what's going to happen, you yeah. wouldn't do it. If so you know too much about it, you wouldn't do it. Make it up as you go along. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> that works. 